Okay, well, welcome back to another uh, Shed to Something video here on uh, on the internet. So, what I've got going on here is I'm doing something a little bit different. I haven't seen a lot of this on the internet, uh, basically creating a an office uh, using Shed, a Shed. But, so, I initially went out and was going to buy Shed and convert it, but when I started looking to see what was out there and what I wanted to do with it, I decided to do it from the ground up. I'm not an electrician, plumber, home builder, but I do have experience in all of those things, uh, non non officially. So uh, I felt I could do it, and so I went ahead and uh, pulled permits. Um, here I I live in the Colony, Texas. They require a permit anything over 120 square feet or eight feet tall. So got that going, and I've been working on this is mid October. I've been working on it since July. Uh, as you'll see, it's not just a typical little shed. Uh, it is on pier and beam. Uh, it um, is elevated off the off the ground. It will have a deck, uh, like a six foot deck on the front, um, and it is a considered more or less a lean to roof, similar to a I think they would call it a um, a modern looking shed. Um, fully, they're going to be fully insulated, uh, receptacles on the inside, uh, recessed lighting, ceiling fan, lights on the outside, real windows, real front door, uh, pretty much like a little house without plumbing. So um, anyway, I am uh, my fiance. Uh, yes, I'm getting married, and that's uh, kind of why I'm having to do this. I've, I'm losing the use of my office here. So she works at home. I work from home, and so I want to make sure and have this assembled before um, we needed it and um, anyway uh, you can see this is going to be a, a multi video uh, s um, series this is number one i'm calling it the f word for foundation and framing so anyway i'm sure some of you are going to jump in there and go oh he's doing things wrong and and i would do it this way or why are you doing it that way uh, i get it and also you're going to love how i mispronounce things all the time uh, I'll call I'll call something a, a joist and it should be a um, a two by four whatever but you you'll see um, but basically you'll you'll get the gist of what I'm doing here I am going by plans that I purchased so I didn't come up with all this out of my head uh, but I'm glad I've got the plans and I would suggest you do the same thing so other than that we will get going and you'll see me on the videos coming up so oh do your little like and your bell thingy and all that stuff because it would be nice if I could recoup a couple dollars uh, for what I'm spending. I know, um, you know, it's my choice, not yours. But anyway, uh, you know what? At the very end, you know what I'll probably do is I will. I'll tell you how much it costs me. How about that? I will. I'm paying paying for everything out of my pocket as I go along. So each month I have a very very large credit card bill to pay. But uh, hey, in the end. I won't owe anybody anything. So, all righty, here we go. Okay, so we're at a point now where we actually um, have the um, foundation in. We put the uh, cement piers in. Um, didn't really cover that. Uh, you can see online uh, the right way to do that. Um, I did make sure there was footings on there, 16 in the center, 16 inch um, footings in the bottom. Um, and I am putting three quarter inch uh, foam board insulation between the um, the slats. Um, I'm in Texas, so you know we don't have so much heat coming in from the ground. Ours is from the sun, but I did want this for um, a little bit of a vapor barrier. Um, but even though I have these, the foundation uh, seven inches off the ground, there's plenty of airflow down there. So for this is more or less going to be for um, bug control, just a little bit of insulation. Um, but I did get the three quarter inch that has the uh, foil on one side. So and I'm actually going to be using that up on the ceiling as well uh, flipped around for radiant barrier for the sun but that'll be a future thing so let me just show you kind of what we're doing here all right so here we are on the base this is a 10 by 12 okay and so what we have on the sides here for the rim joist is uh the the plans called for like a three and a half by eight inch um glue lamb and i couldn't really find those and so um what i did was i took two two more two um two two by eight um, pressure treated wood uh, and uh, bolted those together with a piece of pressure treated plywood between it to get the three and a half I think it's three and a half or maybe it's three and a quarter three and a half I think uh, width of these these um, brackets 
Now these, uh, they sell these for doing posts all the time, but this is a bigger one. This is one that's wider and taller for the two by eights. So, and you can see I have those bolted onto the cement uh, pillars, um, uh, posts down here at the bottom. Um, but anyway, so this is what we're doing here. And one little trick that I found is uh, go ahead and just put some, um, some little blocking wood here. And I made a little jig, so this is um, three quarter inch. Uh, thick so that matches this this uh, foam here and this way you can kind of push it down and they'll sit there for when we go ahead and put the foil on uh, like I said it's probably a bit like um, uh, maybe it's a little overkill but uh, this is going to be quiet um, when I put the um, um, uh, the contact glue down and uh, with the foam it's going to be pretty in pretty good shape so anyway it helps have a second person that's cutting for you uh, it's my assistant over here Karen say hi hi Karen uh, so she's measuring each of these, uh, the width of these, which is about 14 and a half inches for most of these. But on the end, they're actually a little shorter because the way um, we're doing 16 inch centers on the wood. So um, these, um, these end ones are not the same width as those. So uh, anyway, another trick, do these at the end because if you start shoving wood down in here, it could it'll bow this wood and you want to keep your width across here. All right. So at this point, we've got the three quarter inch uh, foil backed. Uh, inch uh, um, insulation panels down on the uh, frame um, and also you have to use construction adhesive between the uh, floor uh, OMD and the wood so and this stuff that this tape I put on here is metallic so what I've done is I've left like a, a quarter inch to half inch gap right here for that for that wood glue and I'm gonna put a bead all the way down there you know and all the way around the edge and all that but the foil is doing its thing as far as, um, you know, sealing this, this, this edge up. So um, it's probably overkill, like I said, but um, this is, um, you know, as they say, when you want something done right, you do it yourself or you spend too much money. All right, so now we're basically putting the OMD flooring down. I just want to kind of go over some details here. What we're using for the, um, the glue to go between the OMD and the studs is this subfloor and deck liquid nails, okay? And it's meant for wood to wood, that sort of thing. That's why I left that gap on the uh, foil. Now I'm using a nail gun, which I highly recommend you either rent or you get. And I'm using three inch framing nails that are three inches, um, you know, 0.120. I forget if that's the 12 or whatever. Anyway, but the, the trick here is that this is, um, it's uh, dipped galvanized because we're going into treated wood, uh, the two by sixes on the floor, you want to use galvanized wood, uh, or nails, excuse me. Uh, and as far as the foil is concerned that we use, uh, this is what we use, the flex duct tape. And uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's, this was just a few bucks at the Home Depot. So it's a DC 181, whatever that means. Um, all right, so let me show you how, uh, how we're applying that, that glue on there. So <clears throat> we've, what we've done is we've put the first two pieces on the first eight footer okay uh and then the four footer but we didn't nail it all the way down so we left this part to where the tongue and groove is um kind of uh, loose because you might need a wiggle to get the wood together then you'll you'll bring it down but i just kind of tack nailed along the edge just a couple just to keep the frame okay and and you can see what, what we've done here is we've got this glue you know this this adhesive going wrong here right and then right right in between the foil okay so, um, and now we're going to put the second row on. All right. So I'm going to just kind of blow through what I did with, for the framing only because I didn't really record. I didn't re record video on a lot of that. <clears throat> I was uh, just kind of getting started. So what we're showing, what I'm kind of showing you here is, uh, I staged this in my garage. Um, I took the, I, uh, set the frames together like this as me getting the flooring ready. And you can see that I put the, uh, joist hangers all on on either end and I measured the, the 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 locations where they should be and what I did was I took the the front and back main joists and put them against each other and marked them together and then put the hangers on so uh, again a lot of videos online explain how to do that uh, here is where I you can see I just uh, frame it out um, now one thing I'd say in retrospect I would have probably should have done was go ahead and build these on top of the um, the floor, the subfloor. And because I was off by a little bit as far as width, um, I kind of had to tweak, but uh, it wasn't too bad. But I was just trying to get it all done in my garage. 
Uh, here you can see that I've uh, put the uh, floor joists uh, on the hangers. I actually don't have them screwed in. Uh, none of this was really screwed together because it was going to be too heavy to carry out to the site, uh, which was, you know, in my backyard. So I was just fitting it all together. And right here in the center, you can see I kind of have a, uh, uh, a strap that's pulling those together. I actually went by uh, Harbor Freight, and they sell these straps that have these corner pieces on them. They, uh, they use them for uh, squaring up boxes. Uh, so I was able to get two or three of those and then put that all around the edge of the of the system already uh, of of the, of the whole subfloor and cinch it up and that's how I was able to get a nice square uh, when we got it on on the uh, out in the yard. Uh, so over here, this is kind of where you can see that we've got it uh, in place. I've got them bolted down onto the cement piers. Um, I do have these lag bolts in here because I didn't have uh, a called for. I believe it was um, a three and a half by eight uh, glue lamb um, and so but the alternative was two by eights that were sandwiched uh, around a uh, piece of uh, plywood so that's what I did that's why you see these these bolts here those are holding all that together um, okay and so kind of the finished product at that stage was here you can see I've got the wood on in retrospect you can see over here I kind of have a little issue here as far as the um, the spacing and really what I should have done is taken and taken the first piece found the seven foot mark and put the uh, the three-quarter inch um, flooring there and then cut it off at the end right and that's how I could make sure that it would have been uh, more square but I was managed to wiggle things around and get it okay but and no one's gonna see that it's uh, as we said in the other video it's it's all glued down okay so, and this right here was just before we put the uh, three-quarter inch on top. You can see all the panels on there, kind of ready to go. So, uh, a little more detail. Here is where I was working on the front uh, in the garage. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to frame in the doors, the windows with uh, the headers. And, and I really didn't realize how heavy this was going to be. So this this one have been really good to do in place, and then just try and get some people to help lift it up. When we tried to get it out to the uh, location, it took all we had to with two people to lift, move a couple feet, lift, move a couple feet. Uh, and what I had to do is I had to kind of come up with a hoisting jig, uh, essentially hoisting the corners up and putting them on pieces of uh, stone, and while I had it strapped at the top. So it wouldn't fall. Uh, that would have. That was just not actually very smart. I should not have done that. I should have more people at least. So, but again, it was a weekend thing, and we were just running out of time. Uh, here's a little more detail of me uh, getting the front put together, and you can see I've got the two sides leaning up in the garage. Um, this is where we started to lay down the the back and then the sides. Uh, right here, if you can see, I've got these two by fours glue, uh, screwed into um, the cross uh, beams at the bottom. And this was so that when you slid those walls up, they would stop and stay right at the edge so that you could tack nail them. So um, I could have used a few more, but that's when I started to realize that it was just a little bit long and quite wasn't as straight as I thought it was going to be. So again, that would have been better to build these uh, in place. Okay. So over here, you can see just another uh, view as we're getting ready to take the back and put the back up. Uh, you, can, you can tell this is the back because the corner doesn't have this uh, piece of uh, wood in the header because the sides are going to sit in that on either side. More, uh, you can certainly find better details of this on the Internet. Um, so here we've got the back put up. You can see I've got these uh, pieces of 2x4 uh, leaning up. And this was, uh, this was good to keep it from falling away and landing on the fence. Once we um, uh, folded it up, I then just tack nailed down here in the corner once I uh, got it straight with the level. Okay, so that could hold it up until we uh, got the sides put on. Um, okay, and so here is the framing when it was finished, uh, put up. Um, and you can see that this this is the part I'm talking about. It was very heavy because it's almost 12 feet tall off the ground, and it had these uh, two by six headers at the tops, uh, away at the top where the roof line was going to be. 
two by six uh, headers above both windows and the front door, and a lot of vertical uh, two by fours. So a tremendous amount of weight, tremendous amount of weight. So, uh, and here's one more image right here showing you uh, like the next day of how that looks. So, uh, there you go. So framing, eh, learned a couple things, but it came together as you can see.